And good evening, and welcome once again to the Shadow Gallery. I am, as always, your host, James Donnelly. And tonight, well, again, we have no new... New comics, bitches! Because of a couple of problems. Now, you see this? See this nice, thick notebook that I have that I that I bought uh, specifically to, you know, because I filled my old notebook up with all of my you know, notes on the comics that I'm doing. Well, guess what? Looky here. It's completely fucking empty. You know why? Because I couldn't pick up my comics this week because my fucking computer is... Well, it's dying. It's on its last fucking legs. And I brought it in, had some place to look at it, and they told me today that, well, it's just uh, that the screen is making some kind of weird whiny sound. And not the fan. So the fan is actually fine. It's just that, for whatever reason, the fucking uh, screen is starting to die on my uh, $900 uh, TouchSmart computer that I bought two years ago. Uh, so, yeah, December of 2010, that's when I bought it. So it's just a little bit over two years old, and already it's pretty much fucked. Uh, so, yeah. That's not pleasing to me at all. Uh, so I wasn't able to really read any of the uh, my digital downloads that I normally get, and I had to spend all my fucking extra money on having them look at the fucking computer to determine what was wrong with it, when really just, well, since it's an all-in-one, it costs even more to have them look at it. So that's a big fuck you to... Uh, well, HP, I'll say fuck you to HP, even though I probably will buy another HP, uh, just, and it probably will be another all-in-one because it does have all the shit that I want, uh, but there's no fucking way in hell I'm going to buy another one that expensive again. There is another reason for my ire this evening. And let's just come out with it. And this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I'm talking about cancellations. Now, of course, the new 52 has been, well, DC. Uh, of course, you know, the whole idea of the new 52 is it came out with 52 new comics, and that was going to be their core, you know, their core titles. Um, and, of course, you know, some were underselling, and some, may, you know, so they, and some just weren't very well received. Uh, but, you know, of course, the ones that weren't very well received, but still did respectable business, they kept. And some of the decent ones, they shit-canned. Uh, for the first wave, uh, the only one that I really missed was Men of War. Uh, from the second wave, the one that I uh, uh, was going to be missing was uh, Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. Um, and now, uh, today, uh, DC announced some other cancellation that it's going to be doing. Uh, the first one that, uh, the one that I saw, anyway, before I left for work, uh, was that they were going to be canceling DC Universe Presents. Now, that honestly makes no difference to me, because that comic has sucked since the beginning, uh, and, uh, you know, even when I tried to kind of get back into it, when they had some, you know, new characters, when they brought in, uh, you know, the, the Vandal Savage arc. I was kind of interested in that. I read the first issue of that, and I'm like, I don't care. Um, and I, th I think, is All-Star Western also getting canceled? I, I don't know, but uh, that was a comic that I enjoyed for a while, and then it just kind of got, meh. Um, so, 
But of course, the one that they did cancel that I heard about when I got home after my software update on this tablet and started looking at all of the Twitter that I've missed today uh, because I uh, went to only one site today at work at the very start of work, which is about 3 p.m. Uh, well, you know, it was, I looked at it at about uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, if you want to put it that way, at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And they were talking about uh, that uh, that DC Universe Presents had indeed been canceled. Actually, no, they didn't talk about any cancellations. I heard about that through Twitter when I woke up. But when I got home this evening, there were some very, 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 very disturbing news. Yes, indeed, the day that I have dreaded for many, 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 many months has finally come to pass, and I guess it's really to be expected, because DC, well, <clears throat> they only really like to keep the comics that do really good business. Um, and that, of course, was the cancellation of Joshua Fialkoff's I Vampire, which I consider to be Certainly, if if anything, the second best comic that DC is putting out right now. Uh, aside from Batman, it's the one book that I will always race to and will always put at the top of my stack of things to read when I get it. And they fucking canceled it. And it will be canceled as of issue 19. Now, Josh Fialkoff because he's such a fucking class act, uh, said that he actually found out about it four months ago. Um, and that he also said in another tweet that he says that all of the tales that he wanted to tell about Andrew and Mary uh, are done. And I call that being a class act, but I also call it bullshit. Uh, because he did say also, uh, but John and Tig, on the other hand, in a later tweet. Um, so yes, uh, there are books, uh, like, uh, uh, Christian, who I, uh, follow on Twitter, who hasn't been around, unfortunately, a lot on the, uh, on the YouTube, uh, has, uh, you know, stated, for instance, uh, I Vampire is being canceled, but Red Lanterns is still being put out, and all of the various Green Lantern uh, titles, um, you know, they've, they're making way for, you know, bigger series and so on and so forth, and, you know, uh, you know, Basically, it's kind of coming down to this. DC, fuck you. That's what I say to you. I say, fuck you. See? See these two middle fingers? They are for you. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck you. For canceling one of your best series. Yes, it might be underselling. It might not be in the top whatever, but it's better than the than 51 of your other titles out there. And I would say at least as good as Batman. Okay, maybe that's overstating it, but I feel and have since the beginning, since the first issue of I, Vampire, I said to myself, this is a comic that I'm going to be probably very passionate about. Because it's going to be one of those that I believe is probably going to be on the chopping block for a long time. So, 
Obviously, I know that they have to make room for Snyder and Jim Lee's Man of Steel title. Um, but, you know, uh, Suicide Squad, why is that still in, why is that still running? Why the fuck is that piece of shit still on the shelves? Bringing John Constantine to the regular DC Universe completely. I get the logic behind that, to be perfectly honest, because obviously he's a big part of what's going on in some of uh, its more involved titles. Uh, you know, Justice League Dark uh, is obviously a, a part of Rot World, so he's there with Animal Man. Um, and, uh, you know, um, but they could have kept Hellblazer going in Vertigo. I mean, that was, you know, Punisher, I mean, you know, they had Punisher Max going at the same time that they had, uh, you know, when they had Punisher War Journal going on, they had it going on when Greg Rucka started his run on the Punisher, um, so, uh, you know, there's room for, uh, this storytelling to be present in other areas. Uh, now Vertigo, of course, took a big hit, uh, when they lost Karen Berger and when they also decided they were going to cancel Hellblazer and just, well, not cancel it, but so much transfer it to the mainstream DCU. Uh, like I said, from a collective DC standpoint, I can understand that as far as Constantine. But here's an idea. Just, just stop me if this starts to sound weird. How about we take iVampire and we take, you know, Josh Fialkoff and, you know, Dennis Calero, if he still wants to be working on it, and put them in Vertigo. What would that hurt? I mean, it's even riskier storytelling now. That seems to be, to me, a fairly reasonable idea, uh, because it does have a very, very devoted, de devoted, devoted fan base. And I'm one of them. I am very devoted to I Vampire. So to understand, to, to, to just look at all comics as strictly a, uh, a tool. I, okay, I get it. You're a business, okay? And to look at every comic book no matter how well received it might be, uh, to look at it, you know, in, in, in only terms of dollars and cents, uh, then you just might as well fucking give it up, man. I mean, if, if you don't, you know, I, you know, and I'll go back to this for the rest of my life. I remember reading books like Batman back in the mid-80s, and seeing how uh, Alan Moore's Saga of the Swamp Thing was up for, you know, Eisner's and everything like that. Um, and, you know, I Vampire was up for Best Comic Book Series for the IGN, uh, you know, their 2012 awards. This is not a series like... Uh, Suicide Squad or Red Lanterns or whatever other dreck that you have out there that does sell decently. Uh, Green Lantern's New Guardians. You know. It's... It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Because this is a book that I have told everybody since its inception, you should be reading. It took me almost a year to finally convince Ghost Critic to start reading it. And now he's probably mad that I did because, 
you know, it's going, you know, he started picking it up at issue 12, at, at issue 11, and uh, so he's probably going to be up, well, he picked up the whole, you know, series. Um, you know, this is a book that I loved so much that I actually got the first trade of it just because I wanted the trade. I had the individual issues, had them all, but I wanted the trade. And one of the reasons I wanted the trade is because I knew that it wasn't selling well. So here is my clarion call to all of you. <laughs> Pre-order, go on Amazon. Go to your LCS. Go on Twitter. Go on Facebook. Tweet to DC Comics. Do not end iVampire. Pre-order the, the next trade. From your LCS, pre-order it from Amazon, pre-order it from whatever bookstore, from wh wherever you want to get it from. Just get it. Because maybe if they see that this book actually is doing well because it was the first week that it came out on trade it was one of the top sellers the top five sellers on Amazon that week it beat out a lot of trades of the walking dead which is a fucking phenomenon and <sighs> just do it you know, I made this call earlier with another one of Josh Fialkoff's series, The Last of the Greats. Now, not a lot of you are reading that, and I can appreciate that. It was a small book. Um, you know, I even talked about having the contest in which I was going to give away a copy of the, uh, the trade to somebody. I was going to get two. I was going to get one for myself and one for one of you. I didn't end up doing that. Um, uh, because money was tight, uh, but I could conceivably do that for I Vampire, because if anything else, I want this book to continue. It can't just go away. There can be a revival. I mean, it's impossible to do something like that for, you know, another one of my favorites, which was canceled, which was Secret Six, because that wasn't even included in the lineup for the New 52. So let's just say this book maybe still has a chance. So go out there, continue to buy the single issues, pre-order the trade en masse. We need to marshal our forces because... You can't let a book this fucking great just get canceled because of poor sales. If we, if we show DC that it has enough of a following, you know, I understand it's not like Gail Simone on Batgirl, okay? Gail Simone is a longtime favorite of many, 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 many people. She's one of my favorite writers. I just wish that Batgirl was a little bit better uh, on a more regular basis. It's always good, but only one issue, I think, has been great, and that was its most recent issue. So, do me, yourself, and the rest of the comics world a favor, and don't let DC get away with this. Because if we do it enough, because as soon as I get off of this, I'm going to be going to pre-order the Rise of the Vampires trade. Because there are, I don't care what Josh says, there are more stories that he can tell with Andrew and Mary and Tig and John and Deborah Dancer and Kane and who el whoever else he can get into this book because this is an awesome book and even you know Dennis Calero's art despite the fact that it doesn't have Andrea Sorrentino anymore on it which is a loss but it's not a huge loss because Dennis Calero's art is really really quite good 
uh, which I didn't get around to in my review of the last time because I was having, you know, because that was near the end of the year and I just didn't want to, I wanted to do my year-end wrap-up and everything like that. So just, just do it. You know it's good. I mean, I didn't even change into one of my comic books t-shirts to do this because I just wanted to get this shit out because the wife is asleep now uh, and it's time for me to get angry because I've been angry all evening and this is just one of the reasons why. The computer thing is admittedly a pretty big reason as well, but this is a bigger reason for me to be angry. I do not want to drop DC. I do not want to distrust DC, that they're going to keep fucking over the creators and the fans. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we saw, because of the outpouring of support for Gail Simone, we saw that Gail Simone is still going to be on Batgirl. And that Batgirl, I know it's a Bat Family title, so it does have a built-in readership there. But the whole point is to expose more people to this comic and let them know how great it is and how just... I mean, the storytelling, the art, the characters, how everything has worked and just how, you know, how every issue kind of blows your mind and the art just kind of makes your eyes just pop out. It's just too good to let the fate be determined by a bunch of fuckheads in suits. Okay? It's too good. Now, I didn't say this about Men of War. I didn't say this about Frankenstein. I didn't say this about any of the other comics that have recently been canceled, with maybe the exception of Punisher. But to be perfectly honest, that book... I had felt kind of had gone as far as it was going to in regards to the story that Greg Rucka was telling. Because you had, you know, a relatively, relatively speaking, non-violent uh, Punisher book. And you had, you know, the, you know, there was no internal monologue. Anyway, there's a number of reasons that the Punisher ending, I was very, very upset about that, but I wasn't as angry as I am about this, because this is something that's being canceled because, for the sole reason that it's just not selling well. I can, like I said, I can understand from a storytelling point of view why Punisher ended when it did. It's still sad that it's gone, and I'm still thankful that we have Punisher Warzone, to be reading, at least for five issues. But all this other Punisher stuff that they release, you know, the Space Punisher, which I've heard is very fun, but whatever. Uh, this Punisher Nightmare, which I hear is kind of shitty. Um, and it's just... I Vampire should continue. Just, if that's... You know, there's really only one thing to take away from tonight's vlog, and that's it. Is that I Vampire should go on... I believe that it can go on, and I can't say that it needs to, but I'm going to be goddamned if I say that I don't want to read more excellent storytelling from Josh Fialkoff about Andrew Bennett, about Mary Queen of Blood, about John Troughton, about Tig, about Deborah Dancer, about Kane, whatever there are a number of possibilities of where they can go from here. So let's get together, people, and get it. Try and save it. Maybe, maybe. That's it. That's all I've got tonight. I'm sorry this has been such a kind of a, a pissy uh, uh, vlog, but uh, that's it for tonight. So... Uh, just heed my call. Go and do it. I'm going to go do it right now. So, thanks for watching. And stay in the shadows, people. Stay in the shadows.